City living has its advantages and disadvantages, but in some places around the world, people are coming up with innovative ways to eliminate the negative and accentuate the positive. Well, fill up your transit cards and hop aboard as we share some of our favorite genius ideas we think should be in every city. From repurposed infrastructure to disappearing, reappearing artwork and everything in between. Oh, and stay tuned to the end of this video to find out which city we've dubbed the champion of urban planning. The first stop on our world tour of amazing urban ideas is the Big Apple, New York City, where, as of 2009, tourists and locals alike have been treated to what has become known as one of the greatest experiments in repurposing of urban infrastructure. Welcome to the High Line. What was once an abandoned stretch of elevated railroad tracks is now a delightfully charming elevated public park. While not the world's first elevated park, it certainly has become among the most famous. The one and a half mile park is elevated 30 feet above the borough of Manhattan and features 15 garden zones with over 100,000 plants, is host to public art installations, cultural programs like dance, gardening, and meditation, over a dozen food vendors for hungry visitors, and even a traffic viewing station where guests make use of amphitheater-style seating to get a pigeon's eye view of the city's famous crowded streets. Originally constructed in the 1930s as part of the now defunct New York Central Railroad system, the stretch of tracks fell out of commission entirely in 1980 after decades of declining use. Threatened with demolition, a non-for-profit organization called Friends of the High Line formed in 1999, advocating for its preservation and reuse as a public open space. Ten years later, the group was able to turn this into this. Nice work. Our next stop is over 7,000 miles from New York in the Chinese city of Shanghai. But distance is not a problem for our next featured genius idea, the world's first and only commercially successful maglev train. Maglev is short for magnetic levitation. And that's exactly what sets this type of train apart from the rest. With maglev technology, the world's fastest commercial train travels along a guideway using magnets to create both lift and propulsion. With no need for fuel and no wheel-on traffic friction, the Shanghai Manglev, also known as the Trans Rapid, requires less maintenance and produces zero air pollution. And just how fast are we talking? This futuristic choo-choo has been clocked in at close to 270 miles an hour. That's 430 kilometers. Now that's fast. The stability of the magnetic propulsion system also allows for wider, more spacious train cars for a more comfortable ride. And without the irritating screech of wheel-on-track friction, you can enjoy the ride in near silence. Except, of course, for that one guy in the seat in front of you watching this video without earplugs. Hey, pal. I know my voice is quite soothing, but uh, could you turn it down? Would you trade in your current commute for a maglev experience? Let us know in the comments. The next genius idea is actually one that was put in place two centuries ago. Welcome to Chicago, Illinois, USA, home to the country's most revered system of back alleyways. Before we explain why you should be impressed, let's start with a brief history of how they came to be. The National Land Ordinance of 1785 divided up American land west of the Ohio River into massive square grids. Forty-five years later, in 1830, a surveyor by the name of James Thompson was tasked with laying out what would become the city of Chicago. Using the imposed square grids, Thompson's original city plan included 58 square blocks and every single one was given a back alleyway. The choice was one of practicality, as the alleyways provided a place to collect garbage, deliver coal, and even store human waste, essentially keeping anything unpleasant away from living quarters. Still used in much the same way today, the Windy City's 1,900 miles of alleyways keep sanitation trucks and delivery vehicles from clogging traffic on the city's main streets and also provide parking garages and play areas for residents. Many Chicagoans will argue that the garbage pickup alone is enough to make their city a nicer place to live than other cities like New York that still pile their garbage up on the sidewalk in front of buildings along the main walkways. Stinky. Speaking of garbage, have you ever heard of an automated vacuum waste collection system? We were unaware of them too, even though the first ones were designed in Sweden way back in the early 1960s. If you'd love to live in a city where you didn't go to sleep next to festering heaps of stinky garbage and wake up the next morning to the sound of incessantly loud garbage trucks collecting it, then an automated vacuum collection or AVAC system is for you. Here's how they work. Waste collection boxes are placed throughout the city and connected to a series of underground pneumatic tubes or pipes. When the collection boxes are full of trash, a sensor triggers the vacuum suction, which pulls the trash through the pipeline to a nearby central waste station. The system then automatically sorts the trash into proper containers, including separating recyclables, where they can later be transported to landfills or composting plants. 
Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? Well, believe it or not, there are close to a thousand AVAC systems in place around the world today, including ones in major cities like Copenhagen, Denmark, Barcelona, Spain, London, England, and in the home country of the AVAC system, Stockholm in Sweden, with more and more planned from major cities around the world. AVAC systems not only reduce odorous and dangerous air pollution, but also the need for fuel-burning, traffic-blocking garbage trucks for maximum environmental benefits. Here's another genius idea that benefits the environment, that is, the microenvironment that exists on your hands. Check out this photo posted by a Reddit user from a supermarket in Italy. Now you can get all the water flow you want without touching a dirty public sink. Just be sure and wash your pants on the regular. When you use a public restroom and you go to wash your hands, do you get frustrated when those laser sensors take too darn long to kick in? Or how about when the faucet controls you have to push with your hands suddenly stop dispensing water while you're still standing there covered in soap? Pain in the neck, right? Well, fret no more because somebody invented knee-activated water faucets. While we're on the subject of environmental benefits, we wouldn't mind seeing more green initiatives in cities throughout the world. So let's give a shout out to one of the greenest cities there is, Eugene, Oregon. For the last several decades, the small city located in America's Pacific Northwest has put major focus on creating innovative ways to become more sustainable. Currently, Eugene, whose nickname is the Emerald City, proudly proclaims that 85% of its energy comes from renewable sources such as hydroelectric and wind turbines. Its public transportation makes use of hybrid vehicle technology and the city also buys back excess power from residents who install solar paneling. And they don't plan on slowing down anytime soon. In 2010, the city's Sustainability Commission rolled out a new climate recovery ordinance, whose goals include reducing fossil fuel use by 50% by 2030 and reducing the total community greenhouse gas emissions to a level of carbon neutrality by as early as 2020. Popular Science ranked Eugene among the top five greenest cities in America, and Livability.com ranked it the 28th most livable city in America. With its active community, easy accessibility by car, bike, or on foot, and its clean, breathable air, it's easy to see why. Next on our list is one of the most ingenious engineering feats we've ever seen, and it's located in Tokyo, Japan. Long at risk of facing the impact of powerful typhoons and tsunamis, Japan's engineers have come up with the remarkable Metropolitan Area Outer Underground Discharge Channel. Completed in 2006 and costing an astounding $2 billion, the 3.9-mile or 6.3-kilometer network of tunnels and chambers is designed to protect the city from flooding. A good idea considering the devastating impact flooding has had to the city countless times in the past. The 50-meter-deep chambers are connected to a powerful 13,000-horsepower pump capable of discharging 200 tons of water per second into the city's nearby rivers. Parts of the chamber system are even open to the public for touring. So, if you're visiting Tokyo, be sure to check out this amazing feat of life-saving engineering. Rainy days have always been synonymous with feelings of dreariness and misery. So why not brighten things up with a little color? Well, that's exactly what a group of clever artists did to combat the blues of monsoon season in Seoul, South Korea, when they created rain-activated street murals. Called the Monsoon Project, designers used a specially formulated hydrochromatic paint to create brilliant, colorful scenes that only appear when it's raining. The project's website describes it as follows, quote, Inspired by South Korea's culture of emphasizing the importance of the flow of rivers, the paintings utilize Korea's topographical features that create a flow and puddle of rainwater in every street to fill the streets with color and life." End quote. Now that's innovative. A similar project called Rainworks can currently be enjoyed in America's rainy city of Seattle, Washington. We would love to see this and other colorful and clever art installations in cities around the world, wouldn't you? Let us know in the comments. What to do with excess water appears to be a problem for most urban areas. Who among us hasn't stepped in a sidewalk puddle and soaked our shoes, or worse, tried driving through a flooded street and caused expensive damage to a car? Surely there must be a solution to this, right? Enter the geniuses of environmental services in America's Portland, Oregon. Back in 2004, the city began experimenting with water-permeable streets that eliminate flooding. No, for reals! By paving the streets with interlocking concrete blocks, rainwater permeates the street surface and flows straight into the ground. Under the bricks, a layer of fine rock and a geotextile fabric help to filter out pollutants to prevent them from entering the soil. Genius! The project has also reduced sewer blockages, stream pollution, and even residential basement flooding. Why isn't every city on Earth doing this? 
By the way, did you notice how we have visited Oregon twice in this video? We're considering moving there. What do you think? Urban bicycling is becoming more and more ubiquitous, and with that comes a growing concern for bicyclists' safety. Over in a town called Lidzbark Warminski in northern Poland, a local company has created an ingenious way to illuminate bicycle paths at night by getting them to glow in the dark. The surface of the bike path contains a synthetic material called phosphor, which absorbs sunlight during the day and converts it to fluorescent light at night, brilliantly illuminating the way for those getting around town by bicycle after the sun goes down. The president of the company, called the TPA Institute for Technological Research, explains, quote, The material we use for the track gives light for over 10 hours. That means the road can radiate throughout the whole night and reaccumulate the light the following day, end quote. This bright idea, see what we did there, may have been put in place for safety reasons, but the fact that its soft, colorful glow against the dark of night is so darn beautiful doesn't hurt matters either. For our final entry on this list, we'd like to pay our respects to a city that we've dubbed the champion of urban planning. Any guesses as to which city we mean? If you guessed the beautiful and popular Dutch city of Amsterdam, you'd be correct. And no, we don't just love this place because it offers so many, let's call them libertarian amenities either. From its beautiful and functional canal system to its brilliantly designed streets and pathways, Amsterdam is truly city planning at its best. First, let's talk about that canal system. Built in the mid-17th century in response to mass immigration, the canals allowed for ease in commerce by allowing merchants to enter through the nearby harbors and navigate the city without ever having to set foot on the land. Originally intended for commercial purposes, the canal also doubled as a defense system creating a protective barrier around the city's outer walls. The canal's main waterway is still used in trade today, and also contains several points of cultural interest, such as the Anne Frank House and several examples of Golden Age Dutch architecture. Both functional and stunningly beautiful, Amsterdam's canal system is one of history's greatest urban designs. On land, Amsterdam is home to one of the most inclusive transportation layouts on Earth, with many parts of the city containing three distinctly separated lanes, one for cars, one for pedestrians, and one for bicyclists, making it easier and safer for people using all forms of transportation to share the city. It's a win-win-win! In fact, Amsterdam is one of the most bicycle-friendly places on Earth. The city claims that 48% of all trips within the city are done by bicycle, with only 22% by car, making the town low on pollution and high on navigability. And even though this amazing display of urban planning has been thriving for centuries, they're not about to get complacent. In 2016, Amsterdam began its Smart City initiative, with plans to revitalize much of the city and give its infrastructure a 21st century technological upgrade. Prost! That's Dutch for cheers. Well, that's all for 11 genius ideas that we think should be in every city. Is there something in your city that we left off of this list? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to The Richest, and join our notification squad. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.